Good morning, folks. We're going to be doing a little lifestyle morning news again so you can see some of the things that go into the morning news. And then a little bit later in the show, we're going to have a little blast from the past. But let's get started here at spaceweathernews.com. Looking at our 48-hour loops, trying to isolate the last 24 hours on our star here, you can see there really was not much to speak of. Zoom back out and come down to the solar flaring. Yes, you can see not really much happening whatsoever. When we've got Discover and uh, a solar wind here, you can see this was the the density and then solar wind speed and temperature blip yesterday. You can see it on both charts. It really is kind of waning back down in intensity now, and despite the fact that we did get uh, two brief geomagnetic storm events, they really are waning now. Uh, we don't expect much more in terms of the solar wind today or in terms of solar flaring. We do have these two sunspot groups. This one remains all by himself. And even though this one is fairly sized and does have at least the start of complexity, the earth facing quiet has utterly quashed him thus far. A uh, little bit of chance for magnetic mixing in the middle, but thus far really no delta class candidates. We can see in 304 angstroms the plasma filaments abound and they are more likely to erupt than the sunspots. Eyes on those. Of course, top left we see the next coronal hole, doesn't feel like waiting, it is creeping in now. Folks, we're over here next at windy.com so you can see how to go through and check to see if you're going to get some inclement weather for the day. First off, make sure that the pressure overlay is on. We are looking for the low pressure earth spots and then seeing where their convergence lines are, the areas where the wind is crashing into each other. So go ahead to above that, the overlay is the rain and snow, you can see where they are crashing into each other. We have a nice little bit of rain there, some over on the east coast as well. You can use the timeline bar at the bottom to go ahead and sort of uh, forecast to see what's coming. And as you can see, the convergence line wrapping down from that low really going to be a trouble in the United States and in Canada tonight. Hopefully you can do this for your part of the world as well. As we peek in at Hubble's shot of inner oxygen, hydrogen, and outer nitrogen from a stellar explosion, it is time now to take a jump back to data I had to pull from a video that was put out half a decade ago. Were you around back when HARP was as useful a space weather monitor as it was a centerpiece of one tangent in the alternative community? Back before it was just the conspiracies. Back when they had the Fluxgate magnetometer and the best F1 ionosphere layer analysis of any ionosond data producer in the world. Without question, the most interesting and concerning of the data products was the critical frequency of the F1 layer, especially when plotted on a yearly scale. This was the end of the millennium, precisely what we expect to see over a year. Now, let's run this up through 2011 and you're going to see something strange happens. You might not even notice the slight uptick in the curve before it goes back down and then proceeds to lose its marbles. The increase occurs as our atmosphere begins to take solar flares at solar maximum, it subsides during solar minimum, but in the mid to late first decade of the century went absolutely ballistic. Folks, we have seen glimpses of this on other devices around the world, but only glimpses, nothing like this. For years, the data poured in, demonstrating that our ionosphere was juicing up, and then, after years of conspiracy after conspiracy, took about five months and five or six YouTube videos on this exact absurdity, and the website was gone forever. Now, true enough, there is now a new joint NASA and Poker Flats website with magnetometer data from the HARP facility, but even in the archive, there's no flux gate, no critical frequency readings, just the magnetometers. In fact, this and the other videos of mine and those who were good enough to mirror them are the only remaining proof that this data ever existed. It corresponds with the beginning of the grand minimum descent, the first coronal hole equatorial anomalies of a solar minimum, the plateau and global temperatures that has led to the warming pause debate, and the record high Antarctic ice run that finally broke with the record El Nino of 2015-2016. Folks, this over-electrification of the ionosphere, critical frequency, and how it relates to our changing Earth are majorly important topics. We'll be discussing them all on today's episode of Fly on the Wall over at SuspiciousObservers.org, along with the news that our sun likely has a twin, the Earth and Sun report, and some news updates and review on glyphosate. The podcast can be found for members over at SuspiciousObservers.org every Saturday. And just a quick reminder that pre-registration drawings for free hotel room upgrades at the conference is one month from now. And of course, whenever someone wins the contest over at QuakeWatch.net, that will come with a ticket to the show as well. 
podcast is coming up. I'll see everyone else in the morning. Be safe, everyone.